Hello again, uh, I'm here with another video, this time related to actually an oscillating system consisting of three springs and two masses. And the mass of this rod, by the way, here is negligible. So we're gonna set the mass of this guy equal zero. So this is basically, this rod is used to connect these uh, two masses together and the springs together, to couple them together. Okay, the objective here is to find the natural frequency of the system. Uh, if I could change this system to just ma one mass, so in other words, change the, um, the two masses to one mass, I'm going to call that mass equivalent, and change the three springs to an equivalent spring, and then place it where this 10 kilogram mass is, so it's under the disturbance of X. Uh, then, simply, the natural frequency is going to be the square root of k equivalent over mass equivalent. So how could I find uh, these uh, mass equivalent and k equivalent? Uh, one, there are different ways that you could do this, but one way would be the energy method. So let me show how the energy method is used here. So energy method f to find the equivalent spring constant, we use uh, potential energy. And basically we find the potential energy of the given system and say it equal to the potential energy of an, of an equivalent system. So what is the potential energy of a linear translating spring? The potential energy, which is sometimes denoted by U, like the work, is one half K delta squared. So I have to figure out what is the amount of deformation in each spring. If I disturb this guy by X here, you see, this is X. So we know already that this guy, the 2 kilonewton, is going to be disturbed by X. So that's its deformation. But when you move this guy by X, how much this guy will move? So if I erase this for you, we can actually show it right here. So say if I move this guy by X, the question is how much this is going to move, which I'm going to call this Y now. So you could see from the geometry, actually, that the relation is very simple. If we call this angle here theta, this is the same angle here theta, right? So it's the ratio of, uh, so if you say, for example, tangent theta for a small angle is the same as the angle theta, and that's equal to x divided by 0 0.1, uh, the 100 millimeters. Similarly, theta is y over 0 0.2 if you use this triangle here, right? So you could see that actually y over 0.2 is equal to x over 0.1, therefore y is equal to 2x. This just makes sense. Look at the ratio of 200 to 100 millimeters. So now we know y is double the, uh, uh, you know, the amount of uh, deformation of this spring. This is going to be compressed, this guy, and this is going to stretch. But it doesn't matter. We have 1 half k delta squared. So let's go ahead and find the potential energy of our system. So it's 1 half k, by the way, 2,000 newtons per meter is 2 kilonewton. X squared, that's for this guy. So I took care of that. Okay, what about this guy? So this guy would be 1 half, uh, again, also 2,000 times, uh, times Y squared this time. And similarly for this guy, 1 half, uh, 3,500 Y squared. So I'm going to set this equal to uh, the equivalent uh, potential, the potential energy of the uh, equivalent spring, so equal to 1 half k equivalent x squared. So if you replace y by 2x and square it, remember you have to square it, and the same thing here, and square it, we end up getting, and by the way, we can get rid of the, uh, the 1 half, the 1 half is going to disappear, so we don't have to worry about that. Look what happens. We have a 2,000 if you factor x squared out. We end up getting an 8,000 here, and we end up getting a 14,000 because you have a 4 times 3,500 here when you square the 2. Okay, so that's x squared. If you factor x squared out, and you have k equivalent x squared. So look, this becomes k equivalent, which happens to be uh, 24,000. 24,000 watt newtons per meter. So that was easy. So now, what about the mass equivalent? Let me, in this little space that I have here... Um, try to show you what's going on. Pretty much the same. 
Using energy method for equivalent mass, we're going to set the uh, kinetic energy of our system equal to kinetic energy of our equivalent system. So what is kinetic energy? One half mass times velocity squared. So the 10 kilogram mass, what is its velocity? Velocity of this guy is going to be x dot, the rate of change of x. So that's going to be one half 10 x dot squared. Plus one half, what is the uh, kinetic energy of this guy here? 15 kilograms times y dot squared. But remember, y dot is twice x dot, right? So velocity of this mass actually is twice velocity of the 10 kilogram mass. Equal one half equivalent mass times velocity squared, x dot squared. Remember, we're using this guy. All right, so if you do the same thing here, if you replace this guy by uh, 2x dot and clean this up, you end up, and the one half is going to get canceled as always, you end up getting a 10 plus a 60 here, so we get 70x dot squared equal mass equivalent x dot squared, therefore mass equivalent is going to be 70 kilograms. So now let me go to the next page. So, so far we got our K equivalent equal to 24,000 newtons per meter, right? And we got our mass equivalent equal to 70 kilograms. So, actually the differential equation of this system, the system that I had a minute ago here on the other page, this system, of course, there is no friction here. So, as if this guy is just rolling and disturbed by X, it's going to be what? It's going to be mass equivalent x double dot plus k equivalent x equals zero. So in this case would be 70 x double dot plus 24,000 x equals zero. Therefore, the natural frequency would be square root of k equivalent divided by mass equivalent, which happens to be about 18.52 radians per second. So remember, any system, in any system you have, any complicated system you have, and this is not a complicated system, can be eventually reduced to a, just a mass equivalent and spring equivalent at any position as you, uh, you want. I could have put, I could have called this x here. So the equation would be different. Uh, but uh, once you get the mass equivalent and k equivalent, then finding the natural frequency is very easy. The natural frequency is always the square root of K equivalent over mass equivalent. So hopefully I'll come back with another video uh, showing you that you could actually get the same differential equation or the same mass equivalent and K equivalent using a different approach, using actually the equilibrium approach. I mean, uh, using F equal MA. That's what I meant by that. Okay, thank you again, uh, as always, for watching and listening.